What I wanted to talk about today is blood sugar and insulin, the hormone insulin, and I'm going to talk a little bit about type 2 diabetes also. Um, so I'm just going to basically, when, you're, when your fat programs are on, your body loses the ability to regulate blood sugar. And this becomes a real problem when you're trying to lose weight because you end up eating and craving sweets simply because you can't regulate your blood sugar properly. And so it's really, really important to understand the mechanics of how your body's supposed to regulate blood sugar and what goes wrong when the fat programs are on and what you can do about it. Um, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about type 2 diabetes because it's related and also why the Gabriel Method has been very successful in helping people uh, manage and even sometimes reverse type 2 diabetes. I've had a number of people tell me that they were taking up to 11 different insulin tablets a day to, to manage their type 2 diabetes and they're not taking it anymore. Their doctor told them that they don't need it anymore. And it's simply because their body is now able to regulate blood sugar more properly. So it's really important to understand blood sugar. Um, so I'll just start with, with the basics. When you, when, when you eat a meal, your, your stomach digests the food, and the sugar goes into your bloodstream. And that causes your blood sugar levels to elevate. Now, you always want to have a certain amount of sugar in your bloodstream. Not too much and not too little. Because your brain uses sugar for food. So your brain's always using sugar. And your body's always supplying sugar through the bloodstream to your brain. If your blood sugar falls too low, it can become very dangerous because your brain's not going to have enough sugar to, to, to function properly. If your blood sugar gets too high, it can cause nerve damage. So keeping your blood sugar in a very narrow range, in an ideal optimal range, is crucial to properly functioning. Now when you eat a meal, your blood sugar goes way up, much higher than the amount that you normally need. So what happens is your body stores that excess sugar in the cells of your body. It stores it in your liver, it stores it in your muscles, and it stores it in your fat cells. And once, it's, once it stores all this excess sugar that's in your blood, then your blood sugar levels go back down again. Now the way your body stores sugar is when you eat a meal and your blood sugar levels go up, your pancreas secretes the hormone insulin. And it's insulin's job to help you store blood sugar, to help you lower your blood sugar levels. And the way insulin does this is it's a hormone that attaches to the cell wall of these different cells in your body, in your liver cells, in your muscle cells, and in your fat cells. And, and it's almost like a, a key that opens up a doorway. And so your cell wall opens up like a little window that allows sugar to come in. So if you think of insulin as like a, as like a key that opens a lock in your cell, and then the cell wall opens up and sugar can get in. And so insulin goes through your bloodstream, opening up, unlocking, the cells of all of your body, of all these different parts of your body, and the sugar goes in. And so, once your sugar levels go back down to the desired range, your insulin levels go back down again. Then what happens is, after a while, your blood sugar levels go down too low because your brain and your body's using that sugar that's in your bloodstream. And when your blood sugar levels go down too low your body sends out another hormone called glucagon. And that hormone goes to all the cells of your body, open, unlocks it, and gets the sugar back. So it's almost like a bank account for sugar. Your liver cells, your muscle cells, and your fat cells are like a bank account to hold sugar. And it's like when the sugar levels are too high, it's like you're putting money in the bank. When your blood sugar levels fall too low, you're taking money out of the bank. And in this way, your body properly regulates your blood sugar throughout the day. Now, here's the problem. 
When your fat programs are on, your body stops listening to the hormone insulin. It becomes insulin resistant. And what that means is that it's almost like the key doesn't work anymore in the cell. You understand? So, so, so it goes and it, try, and, it's, and it knocks on the cell, it tries to open it and say, let some sugar in and the cell's not listening. It becomes resistant. So what your body does then is it produces more insulin and more and more and more insulin, like it's screaming. It's almost like the cells of your body have become deaf to the hormone insulin, so your body screams insulin. So that eventually, if your body pumps out enough insulin, your, your cells will listen to it, and, and your sugar levels will go back down. So when your fat programs are on, and you get this condition called insulin resistance, and the cells of your body stop listening to insulin, it takes much more insulin to get the job done. So your insulin levels go up. You become what's called hyperinsulinemia, or you have what's called hyperinsulinemia. Hyper means high insulin is insulin, emia is a condition. So it's a condition in which your insulin levels are too high. And they have to be too high to manage your blood sugar. But insulin is also the fat storage hormone. So when insulin, when your insulin, when there's insulin in your bloodstream, your body goes into a kind of fat storage mode where it becomes, where it activates all of the different enzymes in your body that make fat. And so your body goes into fat making mode. Because if, if the sugar goes into the fat cells, your body starts making fat. Now, when you have hyperinsulinemia, when your insulin levels are too high, your, your body's always in this fat storage mode when your insulin levels are too high, when you have this hyperinsulinemia. As long as your insulin levels are high, you lose the ability to burn fat. And the reason you lose the ability to burn fat is because insulin stops your body from producing the hormones that burn fat, like, like glucagon, and, it, and the enzymes that burn fat. When your insulin levels are, are, are high, if you think about it, your body's going to say, if we're in fat storage mode, we don't want to burn fat. It doesn't make any sense. So your body's going to stay in a perpetual state of fat storage. Now, because your body's resistant to, to insulin and because your insulin levels are too high, once your blood sugar goes down low again, your insulin levels are still higher than they should be. Now, what's supposed to happen is once your sh blood sugar levels go down too low, insulin's supposed to be out of your system. But because you've got this hyperinsulinemia when your fat program's on, your insulin levels are still higher than they should be. So when your blood sugar goes down again, you can't raise it back up because glucagon doesn't, get, doesn't go into your system. So you lose the ability to retrieve the sugar, the sugar that you've stored. So it's a bit like putting money into a bank account and having the account perpetually frozen. You, you, you're storing sugar but you can't retrieve it again. So your blood sugar levels go lower and lower and lower, and the only way to get your blood sugar back up again is to eat something. See, when your, blood, when your system's functioning properly, your blood sugar goes down, and it retrieves that sugar from your liver, your muscle cells, your fat cells, it gets it back. But it can't do that anymore. You've lost the ability to retrieve, you've lost the ability to burn fat efficiently, and you've lost the ability to retrieve sugar efficiently. So what happens is you end up getting blood, low blood sugar episodes. And low blood sugar episodes cause ravenous hunger cravings for sugar. Because sugar is the quickest way to get, you know, processed sugar, junk food is the quickest way to get sugar in your system. So you end up having sugar cravings all day long, not because your body needs nu nutrition or calories or even energy, but simply because you've lost the ability to regulate your blood sugar, you've lost the ability to retrieve that sugar. And that's a huge issue that needs to be addressed. As we talked about before, the types of things that cause insulin resistance are stress, um, and eating a lot of junk food 
causes insulin resistance, but it's a, it's a vicious catch-22 because the insulin resistance is causing the junk food. Adding omega-3 fatty acids, live food, and protein to your diet will help reverse insulin resistance, and it will help stabilize your blood sugar. Um, protein can, is actually, what you want is you want, you want foods that release sugar into your system very slowly so that you don't get this accelerated insulin response and these rapid blood sugar fluctuations. Protein obviously is not a sugar, but you can convert protein to sugar and it's a very slow process. So eating, pro eating a breakfast that has a lot of protein will help keep your blood sugar stable for long periods of time. Omega-3 fatty acids are crucial to reversing insulin resistance. The reason is, remember I said before how you, insulin's like a key that, 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 that tries to unlock the cell wall? Well, eating, eating most, most of the fats that we eat today, the saturated fats, the processed fats, the refined fats, they're a hard fat, and our cell wall is made of fat. All the cells of our body has a, permeable, has a wall that's made of fat. Now that fat is a hard, rigid fat that doesn't allow for proper communication with the hormones. Omega-3 fatty acids and other essential fatty acids are permeable fats. And if you eat them every day, over a six-month period, all the cells of your body get replaced with this very permeable fat that allows for proper communication between the hormones and the cells. So, the, so your cells are more sensitive to the hormone insulin and to other, and to other hormones also. And, and, and your, your brain cells are also 65% made of fat. And, and over a six month period, they become covered with this very permeable fat, this essential fat, and that allows for proper communication between the neurotransmitters and the brain cells. And so you don't, you don't get things like bipolar disease and depression and all these kinds of things. And that's why omega-3 fatty acids are so effective in treating um, um, depression and bipolar disorder and ADD and all of these types of things. But if you don't eat a good big breakfast and you go too long without eating during the day, your, your blood sugar level is going to fall too low. It's going to cause sugar cravings. And once you have those sugar cravings and you eat that sugar, you're, it's, the whole day you're not going to be able to stabilize your blood sugar because it's always going to be going too high, too low, too high, too low. So you have to in the beginning be very, very proactive about your blood sugar. Don't go too long without eating during the day and eat foods that have these things, protein, omega-3s, and, and real foods. Add those foods and just be very vigilant and make sure that you haven't gone too long and you're going to get those, those sugar cravings. during the, so. If you eat frequently during the day um, to stabilize your blood sugar, you won't get those rapid blood sugar fluctuations, and over time you'll reverse that condition. So it's a really important point in the beginning.